I'm Nick Goldschmidt, winemaker for Goldschmidt Vineyards, and I'm just going to talk a little bit about what malolactic fermentation means to me. If you think about in wine, we have two major forms of acid. We have tartaric acid and malic acid, and there's a lot of conversation about what malolactic is, and some people say, you know what, this wine is really buttery, or this wine's really fat, I almost have a lot of malolactic in it. That's not necessarily true. In a, in a typical juice, say for instance for Sauvignon Blanc or Chardonnay, when we harvest it, we might have say seven grams of tartaric acid and we might have, you know, three grams of malic. And when you, when you taste those acids, the malic acid is a fairly hard acid. You know, like we, you often hear a term being used when you describe an apple. Uh, that has a lot of malic acid in it. But if we want to put this thing through malolactic fermentation, so primary fermentation is converting sugar to alcohol, which we do with yeast, and then the conversion of malic acid to lactic acid is a conversion done with bacteria. Now this bacteria uh, is introduced, let's say the fermentation is, is going along quite nicely, the yeast is fermenting sugar to alcohol, and we introduce the bacteria that ferments malic acid to lactic. Lactic acid is produced during this process, and there's two things to remember with malic acid. If we start with three grams, we add the bacteria, we get one and a half grams of malic, of lactic, sorry. This is lactic, and this is malic. So it's a half reaction. If you're in a cool climate, this number could be four grams, so you're going to get two grams of lactic. If you're in a warm area, this could be one gram, and so you'll only get half a gram of lactic. So one of the things to remember is when you're tasting a wine is, am I in a cool location or a warm location? If it's a cool location and it goes through 100% malolactic, you could actually end up with a lot more lactic -y or a lot more buttery character. If you're in a warm location, you may end up with less lactic character, even though it's going through 100% malolactic. Hopefully that makes sense. The second thing is, as I said, if this, this fermentation is going along quite happily and you introduce the malolactic fermentation during the primary fermentation, yeast are using nitrogen to stay healthy and active. If we introduce the malolactic fermentation during the primary fermentation, the yeast will change what they feed on. The yeast will eat nitrogen during the primary fermentation, but if the malolactic fermentation starts, the yeast will see this lactic acid and actually use that as an energy source because it's easier for them to eat that rather than trying to use the nitrogen that's naturally in the juice. So we can drive down that malolactic feel by introducing malolactic fermentation during the primary fermentation. The third thing that affects buttery character is the temperature that we ferment at. If we ferment cold, we're going to get more ML character or more buttery character. If we ferment warm, we'll get less. So when people give me a glass of wine and say, oh, you know what, how much malolactic do you think is in this? You don't know. You're going to get confused every time. There's three things you need to know. Number one, how much malic acid did you start with? Was it high or was it low? Fact two, when did they introduce the malolactic fermentation? Did it get inoculated during the primary fermentation and thereby the malolactic character or the buttery character is driven down? In fact, three, what temperature did they ferment it at? Was it warm or cold? All three of those things determine how buttery a wine will be.